everyone, it's Jean from the Inkgal Studio. Thank you for stopping by for a few minutes. Um, I am going to be working on a Roxy Challenge project that she did last week. and But I have to change it up. And it was uh, taking a little bag and uh, making a little flap on it. Now, I did not have a bag. <laughs> and then she had these really cool stamps that she was stamping on them and I don't really have any nature stamps so I, I was in a dilemma so what am I going to do without the stamps and without the bags so I made my own bag and I'm going to show you how I made the bag you can use like tea stain paper to do this if you'd like um, you know it doesn't matter uh, you can use decorative paper whatever but this is how I did it now you don't have to measure, it kind of depends on if you have a specific size that you want. And I wanted to have mine uh, to be four inches wide. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold over four inches. And we'll just uh, line this up a little bit so that... So I fold over four inches. This is the width of my bag right here. And then I'm going to cut off this piece. But it needs to be like three quarters of an inch wider than that fold there. And you can just eye it up. At least that's what I do. I mean, I suppose you could measure, but I'm just going to eye that up a little bit. Now, I do save all these scraps, so good for collaging. And once you've done that, then just fold over. And this is going to be glued along here for the side of your of your bag and then I come down to the bottom and I fold in uh, you know a little over half inch here on the bottom part okay and eventually this is going to get glued down this way then I cut off now I, I like to I like for my flap to come up on the side here that glues this way so the front is real clean looking but it really doesn't matter I guess it's just my preference then you just come over here and cut off this little flap right here there so it's your left with this guy that's going to come up and make your bottom now I like to angle this off a little bit with some of that excess and then when you do that there's sometimes this little tiny flap just sitting out here there we go so that goes down like this and this will come up and this will be the bottom of your bag so at this point you can glue it down and I just run glue down that way and put a little glue skip a glue down here doesn't take a whole lot there you go so that's done now you can determine you know how how long do I want my bag to be or how high so I take my ruler and I want mine to be five inches that's how tall I want it to be I'm going to add two inches to that measurement so I would add two measurements no matter how tall I want it to be. And the reason being is that you want to have room to make your flap. And that's where that is at. So let's just cut that off really fast here. I'll do this quickly. I know there's a bit of a glare on this. There we go. All right. So now for this particular project, um, the thing of it is, I want to have room to get into the bag. So, uh, um, so okay, if, let me just start this way. If you are making just a regular, regular bag, then what you would do is uh, find out where your two inches is, was at. Okay, your two inches was right here. All right, on both sides. And that two inches means that, you know, the bag part 
is going to be five inches, right? Let me make sure. Let me just do it this way. Let me measure five inches this way. Yeah, that's the same. Now you look at these two points and you are going to cut down the side of your bag to where that measurement is. So you're going to cut down here to there and cut down to here. All right. So now here is your bag. Now I allow plenty of room for the flap because you never know what you want to do with it, right? <laughs> so there's plenty of room there. And so we still have a bag of that because you can cut it off, but it's hard to put back on. So it's five by, by four. So we have a five by four bag at this point. Now I like to fold, I like to cut this down just a little bit, about a half inch left over. And I like to fold it to the inside because that will make it strong, the in and out strong. And I would probably, if you're going to put a thumb notch in there, I might even fold over more than this is. But you're just going to put it back over. It's a little fiddly, but if you find your little fold spot there, Sometimes you have to line it up a little bit. All right. So that is your bag. And then you can do what you want with this. You can, uh, I think on this one, I used uh, decorative scissors to kind of make it look like a sack. Angled it in a little bit. You know, you could do this. But with this project, what you're going to need is you're going to need some room let me just do this here. You're going to need some room between here and the fold line so that you can reach in and get your journaling card. So that way, with, you, with all this flap you've got left over, you can fiddle around with it and know how much do you want to have, you know, flip over. So let's say, you know, you want like this much is enough for you. So now you do have room to still get in, even though there's a flip over. All right, so that is how I made my sacks. Now for the paper, this is paper I have that was gifted to me by Joe Bath a uh, while ago. And um, it's, it's great paper because it's brown <laughs> and it's not real heavy, but there's other places to get sack paper. Now, sometimes if you get bags that are lightweight, we go to a shop or whatever and get a lightweight sack. You can cut that up if you um, are able to. But another great resource for something like this is the general purpose masking paper. And it comes on a roll that's 12 inches wide and about 180 feet. And it only costs about $2. And you can make a lifetime of bags out of here. <laughs> Plus, you can use this paper for other stuff, too. It's it's fun to use just, you know, as, as paper in a journaling, um, collage with, or whatever. And I will link down below uh, the name of this paper. And if you Google it, you'll see that where they um, carry it. But usually, it's a hardware store. It's a uh, Walmart carries it. Ace carries it. Home Depot and if you go to their site and you just put in um, masking paper it, they should show up and show you where that's at so that is just my little hints on that and this is a this is one of the bags I made from that particular masking paper and it's it's not particularly heavy which actually is quite good for um, journals because it's not real thick you know to stick inside so anyways, let's get started on the, uh, the little project. And so I didn't have any stamps because what she was doing, she was taking a piece of, um, you know, a piece of print paper and putting a stamp on there. And that was going to be part of the decoration. And it's like, oh, I didn't have any. 
that was really good. I had little tiny nature things, but nothing like a large stamp would look like. So what I did was I printed some black and white. I'll put this behind something. I printed some black and white um, images on vellum paper. And so these images are from the Graphic Fairy. Um, you know, I bet she's got a few images on her free site as well. Uh, it was from the member site that I got these. But I just printed these, and they don't have to be black and white. You could really print out anything. You can print out pretty colored ones, whatever. Um, but that's what I did for that. And so let's get started. Alrighty, I got these... Um, these strips are actually washi tape, nature washi tape from Musings from Nikki. And there are several strips of uh, printouts that is really, really cute because I think it adds a little color to the project. And I am going to glue this on right there. So let's just uh, glue this flap up. Plus it also gives some strength here to the flap. Uh, as well so let me just and I'm going to actually leave a little border of that paper down below kind of like that idea there we go just gonna leave a little border all the way around now instead of cutting this paper off I am going to glue it down to give that bend a little bit more strength. And I even have to get digital washi tape. You can use regular washi tape. I just don't have any that is I like for this type of project. You can actually cut strips off of, you know, collage sheets or whatever. I just thought this looked really, really cute. So then that little seam then has got a little bit of protection on it and so i thought about the printed um well, here's one i made with the print and it looks really cute but i do feel that it's a little on the busy side um i like it though uh but i thought that what would be a really nifty idea is to make this a writing space down here so that when you put your or when I put my vellum paper down you can lift up and write on there and I think it'd be really neat to see handwriting on the other side of the vellum paper I just I don't know it really sounded like a neat idea to me so that's what I decided I would do and I'm just going to tear off a little bit of an edge here Sure, I'm still on screen. I'm still trying to get used to this. Uh... Oh dear, this has got a glare on it, doesn't it? Um, let me kind of do it. You know what? Let me do this off screen because I don't want her. All right, so got that. So this is tea stain paper that I have here. And the first thing I'm going to do, though, you got to glue down the vellum paper first because you'll forget not so you won't have it layered the way it needs to be layered okay there's the back print there all right i'm just gonna put a little bit in there and get that centered right here all right, centered on the flap, and then I'm going to glue this down here, center this, make sure it's centered behind, yes, looks good, and I'm just going to come in here and get this last part done, there, okay. I just I think that would be so cute and then uh, you can write there you can write on the back and probably can glue some paper down there and write on that side as well 
I haven't inked around it, but I can do that later. Now, the top part of it, I know that Roxy was putting a hole in, and when she put a hole punch in, she punched in, um, you know, all the layers at one time and put a hole in. And then, uh, let me show you here. Yes, she put them all in, the holes in it at one time. And then if you strung something in it, it just, you know, wasn't too bad. Um, but I, I just didn't know if I liked that or I just, I guess I just wanted to change it up. So what I decided to do was um, taking my hole punch and I'm taking, I have a small, uh, small, hole, tiny hole punch. I don't know where I got this either. I had it for years and years. You see there's a little buildup of uh, stuff underneath there. Um, but you could use the smaller punch on your crocodile works fantastic and um, you just go in well what I did to measure it I just went in as far as I can go and there's the middle and far as I can go this way in the middle and I'm set I don't have to measure anything else it's all good and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in well now this would be really cute with some uh, bra um, oh this would be really cute why don't we do this let's put in some eyelets yeah we can put in some little small eyelets in there that would be super cute I think okay the brads are in and I noticed I made a mistake on camera when I punched my holes in I punched them on both sides I should have lifted it up and then punched my holes in there. Um, yeah, well, you don't do that, okay? Not so bad. I mean, it's, it still works, just that I could have done it the other way. Now, we're going to put some string in here. I think this is really going to be cute. And you could use twine. I think Tatiana used a uh, ball chain, which was like so cool. Really liked that look. I thought that was pretty neat. And we'll just get in here and quickly get this done. So you can tell I'm not doing this challenge and timing myself. <laughs> I'm just, you know, working off her inspiration and kind of make it my own a little bit. As we all tend to do, um, trying to think, do I want in the middle? No, I'd probably be okay. So I'm going to put a little bow here in the middle. And there we go. It would, you know, it's all kinds of things you could put in here to make a little tie. I was thinking the other day, I used to have some raffia. That would be kind of cute up there. Wouldn't that be cute? All right, so there's the little stringy tie. And you can actually, um, if you want to put a charm on it, what I did was I got a little, um, little small digital, put it on a bulb pin, and you can just put it over there on the side, and it can hang hang over there like that doesn't have to be in the middle and kind of like hang over your design there and I've also got um, this cute little definition here and this is very cute too I like this there we go we'll glue that in there and that is just so cute you could also glue this I suppose too it on the, you can glue it on the inside. Um, yeah, you could. Very cute. But I'm going to glue it on the outside. Kind of like that look a little bit better. So there we go. You can just uh, there. Isn't that sweet? And then you could glue some more tea stain paper down here for some more writing. And you won't have the holes like I do because you will lift this up and put the holes in that way. <laughs> All 
varieties. These are just uh, some little variations that I was experimenting with. They are quite cute. I like this little project. It can really go with a lot of things in your nature um, journals for sure. So thanks a lot for watching. I have down below links to um, some of the information I gave to you today as well as uh, my Instagram and uh, my Etsy shop. And thank you so much. I appreciate everybody's comments and everybody viewing. And I did want to say that the, my next project is going to be steampunk. Um, I have here, I have here just one thing to whet your appetite. And uh, so hopefully we'll see you back soon. Talk to you later. Bye.